Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbera. This is AP Physics Chapter 10, Dynamics of Rotational Motion, Video 3. Today's topic is a rigid body in motion about a moving axis. The objectives are, no rigid body in motion about a moving axis is the combination of a translational and a rotational motion. Understand that the kinetic energy of rigid body in motion about a moving axis is the sum of kinetic energy associated with the motion of the center of the mass and kinetic energy associated with rotation about an axis through the center of the mass. Understand conditions for rolling without slipping. Be able to analyze the motion of a body that both rotates and moves as a whole through space. A rigid body in motion about a moving axis is combined translation and rotation. Take a look at this. Baton torus can be represented as a combination of rotation about the center of the mass right over here plus the translation of the center of the mass, a projectile motion. So this is true even when the center of the mass accelerates. Combine the translation and rotation energy relationship. To find the total energy, we look at a, uh, the energy of one particle. That particle equals mi times vi squared. What is vi? Velocity vi of a particle in rotating, translating rigid body equals velocity v center of the mass plus the particle's velocity relative to the center of mass. So after we uh, multiply this out, we add all the kinetic energy of the particle. And because V center of mass is the same for all particles, so we can factor in that out. We also know omega, this v, Vi prime equals to R times omega. And omega is the same for all particles. So we can factor in omega out as well. So the first terms give us one half m times v center of the mass. This is translational kinetic energy of the center of the mass. Plus the second term, this part m i v i prime. This is the velocity of a center of the mass relative to the center, which is just a zero. And the third one, the the second term m i r i squared. This gives uh, gives us the moment of inertia. So that is the kinetic energy of rotation. So the kinetic energy of rigid body that has both translational and a rotational motion is a sum of the part that's associated with the motion of the center of the mass, which is one half mv center of mass squared, and the other part is associated with rotation about the center of the mass, which is one half i center of mass times omega squared. Rolling without slipping. So the motion of the wheel is the sum of translational motion of the center of the mass plus the rotational motion of the wheel around the center of the mass. So this is center of mass plus the rotating gives us um, the final rotation. So the um, rolling without slipping means the wheel is instantaneously at rest where it contacts the ground. At this point, it has to be zero. That means V, the tangential velocity at that point, has to be equals to an opposite direction to velocity of the center of the mass. That means V2 prime has to be V center of the mass, V3 prime has to be equals to V center of the mass, V4 prime, the magnitude also has to be equals to V center of the mass. As a result, V2 is moving upright at 45 degrees, and V3 is moving to the right at two times V center of the mass, and V4 is moving at up and downward at 45 degrees, it's actually square root of 2 times v center of mass, the magnitude. So conditions for rolling without slipping is this. That again, that means the point on the wheel that contacts the surface must be instantaneously at rest, so it does not slip. v center of mass has to be equals tangential velocity. Tangential velocity equals r times omega. Remember, this relationship holds only if it is rolling without slipping. So some cases, that's not true, so this relationship does not hold. For example, when a drag racer first starts to move, the rear tire spinning very fast, so the r times omega is much larger than v center of the mass. Another example, when driver applies the brakes too heavily, so the tire skid, in that case, the r times omega is less than v center of the mass. So if a rigid body also changes height as it's uh, trans Trans in its translational motion, we also have to consider the gravitational potential energy, U equals mg y center of the mass, so total mechanical energy is conserved. Let's take a look at this uh, example. 
Primitive yo-yo is made by wrapping a string several times around a solid cylinder with mass big M and radius R. So you hold the end of the string stationary while releasing the cylinder with no initial motion. So the string unwinds but does not slip or stretch as the cylinder drops and rotates. Use energy consideration to find a speed V center of the mass of the solid cylinder after it has dropped a distance H. Energy consideration, uh, energy consideration means energy is conserved. K1 has to be 0, U1 equals mgh. K2 is the sum of center of the mass kinetic energy plus rotational kinetic energy and U2 equals 0. Now we know because um, the yo-yo is a cylinder, I center of the mass has to be 1 half mR squared. And because it's rolling without slipping, so omega has to be V center mass over R. So we substitute those quantity in. This is the relationship we have. We can solve for V center of the mass equals to square root of 4 over 3 GH. As you can see, if you just drop the cylinder, its speed should be square root of 2 GH. And as you can see, V center of the mass is less than that. Why is that? Where did it go? The answer is less than square root 2 gh. This is because some of the potential energy is transformed in the rotational kinetic energy. So part of it is translational kinetic energy and part of it becomes a rotational kinetic energy. So it goes down actually slower than free falling. Okay, race of rolling bodies. So in physics lecture demonstration, an instructor raises various round rigid bodies by releasing them from rest at the top of an inclined plane. What shape should a body have to reach the bottom of the incline first? So this, in other words, which shape would have greatest the V center of mass? So let's use the energy consideration. Energy is conserved. Again, K1 equals 0, U2 equals 0, U1 equals MGH. And K2 is two parts, translational part plus rotational part. So the question is, which one has bigger VCM? V center of the mass. So in order to have a bigger VCM, I uh, CM has to be smallest. So the rotational inertia has to be smallest. Which shape has the smallest rotational inertia? Considering all this has to be solid sphere. Which one has the biggest, biggest rotational inertia has to be this ring. So the smaller the moment inertia the body has, the faster the body is moving at the bottom because they have less of their kinetic energy tied up in rotation and have more available for translation. Combine the translation and rotation in dynamics. So a rigid body with total mass m moves, its motion can be described by combining translation and a rotational motion. In translational motion, f equals ma. In rotational motion, torque equals i alpha. So when we learned this equation, we assumed the axis of rotation was stationary, but in fact, this equation is valid even when the axis of rotation moves, provided the following two conditions. First, the axis through the center of the mass, that has to be the axis of symmetry. The second one, the axis must not change directions. For example, when you're riding a bicycle, in this case, the axis of the bicycle wheel pass through the center, which is the axis of symmetry. And hence, the rotation of the wheel is described by the equations. That equation is valid for it, provided, however, when you're riding the bike, you cannot lean to one side. And when you lean to one side, the axis is, is changing directions. The rotation is changing directions. Or when you're turning rotation, the axis is also changing directions. Another example, go back to the primitive yo-yo example. Now, this time, instead of finding the V center of the mass, you are finding the acceleration. So to find acceleration, we have to use the Newton's second law for net force equals ma, net torque equals to i alpha. Net force, you have two forces, mg minus t equals to ma in the y direction, because that is the direction we said y is positive downward, and net torque uh, is t times r equals one half m r squared because m g does not produce torque because it's passed through the center of uh, the rotation axis. It its lever arm equals to zero. We also know because this is rolling without slipping, so a center of the mass equals r times alpha. 
Now, when you plug uh, uh, this, solving these equations, you will have acceleration equals two third g and tension equals one third mg. So we know there has to be a tension. We know acceleration has to be less. But from energy point of view, total me is not lost, yet acceleration is slower. Again, this is because the sum of the potential energy at the top is converted into rotational ke. So it's not uh, completely in um, translational ke. So velocity decreased. Another example, a solid volume burrows without slipping down the return ramp at the side of the alley. So the ramp is inclined at an angle beta to the horizontal. What are the bow's acceleration and the magnitude of frictional force on the bow? Treat the bow as uniform solid sphere. So again, two equations, F equals ma and torque equals to i times alpha. Another equation is the rolling without slipping, so a center of the mass equals to r times alpha z. You can solve this system of equations. This is um, the answer you will get. Okay, a equals 5 seventh g sine beta, fs is 2 seventh mg sine beta. Uh, because the boat does not slip, so the friction has to be static friction. The static friction gives the boat its angular acceleration, also prevents slipping. We can derive, as a matter of fact, that the coefficient of static friction, which equals to Fs over n, remember n equals mg cosine beta, so mu s equals 2 seventh tangent beta. So if beta increases, the boat might slip when it goes down. So in this case, this relationship in the middle does not hold. In order to solve it, we have to consider kinetic friction. If the ball rolls uphill, the static friction is still directed uphill. That's interesting. This is because the ball is rolling clockwise because it's slowing down. So it will need a counterclockwise torque to slow it down. Counterclockwise, counterclockwise torque has to be provided by friction going upward, upward the hill. Rolling friction. So th there are two uh, diagrams here. The one on the left is this perfectly rigid sphere rolling on a perfectly rigid surface. In this situation, neither normal force nor static friction does work, so total mechanical energy is conserved. However, not all the surfaces are perfect. In this case, there is a little bump, a, a deformation on the surface. So normal force produces a torque about the center of the sphere that opposes the rotation. Another thing is the friction also, the, the ball will slide, so you will have a sliding friction. So in this case, normal force exerts a torque to opposite rotation, and the friction does negative work due to sliding, resulting a loss of total mechanical energy. So the combination of these two effects is called a rolling friction. So rolling friction also occurs if the rolling body is deformable, such as the car tire. Rolling friction is very small. It can often be ignored as what we did in the past examples. Last one, test your understanding. Suppose a solid cylinder uh, is used in, um, in the yo-yo is replaced by a hollow cylinder of the same mass and radius. Will the acceleration of the yo-yo, will that increase, decrease, or remains the same? How about the tension in the string? Let's see, a hollow cylinder has a bigger eye. So what happens? The hollow cylinder has a bigger eye. It will, bigger eye will result rotating slower. Right, bigger mass, you know, accelerate less, bigger eye will rotate slower, hence the acceleration will decrease. Now the acceleration is less, that means net force has to be less. That means the tension in the string has to be more. So the answer is B and A. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.